Hello YouTubers and uh, welcome back again to part two of my um, DIY analog synthesizer basics uh, video. Now today I'm going to try and tackle as best as I can and as simple as I can this um, part of circuitry here which is called an exponential converter. So basically what that will do is give you one volt per each musical octave. So say for instance we're tuning by the key of C. Uh, C0 can be say zero volts. 1 volt would be C2 and going upwards and say we had a starting frequency of C1 was 16 point whatever volts uh, C2 would be 32 or sorry C1 would be about 32 hertz um, C3 would be about 65 C430 and C5 261 523 on 7 volts and upwards so you, basically each linear voltage increase will give you a exponential frequency amplification so basically what do we have here this is taken from the Jupiter 8 VCO schematic and this is also used by a few other things like the system, Roland System 100. Now, I wasn't the guy who actually created this um, schematic. There's a thread on Muff Wiggler. I will try and post um, a link on in the description, so keep your eyes on that. Basically, what we have here, and this part here, we can ignore this because this is the oscillator. This is the saw core oscillator, um, which gives you a saw out, as you can see here. The only part we're going to take notice of is just up to this point here. This is basically what I've built. Now, there's a few variants on, on my design which I've done. So basically, I'm, I'm mishmashing using my oscillator with this Expo converter. Um, I pretty much kept most of the components exactly the same. Though you don't have to use a 4558 dual op amp, you can use that. I've started using something called the OPA2132, which is a bit more expensive, but supposed to be a lot more precise and doesn't drift as bad with temperature. Here we have a something which was originally used called a Persistor, which is a TSP102. Now I eliminated that and I've used a 1K Tempco resistor, which is this little guy right here. And as you can see, it is quite smaller in size than the normal, regular, regular size resistors. So that gives us a, that's a positive temperature coefficient. It's a 1K positive temperature coefficient resistor. And that's basically supposed to adjust to compensate uh, resistance as the, the temperature drifts, whichever way. I'm not 100% sure on that. Can't tell you the science behind that. Please look it up and research that. And you might be able to help yourself out on that one. And what we have here is quite an important factor to this circuit to get it to tune to scale to one volt per octave. This PMP transistor here. Now, what I found because I have three VCOs now, and I've I, I battled for weeks trying to get um, two of them to calibrate properly, and one of them was calibrated properly, luckily enough, and quite precisely. So I kind of try to go for all components and think to myself well, what could it be that's causing a problem? And I found that the HFE value of the PMP transistor is quite important. So I made sure they were all matched very closely to the first one's um, PNP transistor here, which, um, as I said, it, this, as you can see here, this we have a trimmer at the end here, which basically gives you a more linear or less linear uh, tracking. What I also had to do was eliminate this 2.2 uh, R10, eliminate this and just change it for a jumper wire, just dump straight across into the collector of that transistor. Part of this uh, circuit here is the 3C, 3A, let's start again, 3046 with a transistor array. And as you can see, that is a bunch of them there. And they are 14 pin dip, which stands for dual inline pin through hole. IC chips now um, there's a couple of ways you can do this there's also another component if you write this down if you look into it it's called the LS318 or it could be the 381 318 you can which basically cuts out all the rest of the uh, transistors and it basically is a matched pair of transistors with the emitters linked as you can see in this photograph here and 
I, th I think the advantages of using that is that both um, are actually internally thermally coupled, which means the heat from one transfers to the other. So you don't get such a um, discrepancy between the sort of the the the, the, the voltages and, and the actual um, values from the output pins. Right, just have a quick scan across here. Uh, what we have here, this part here, we, we, we put a trimmer, not a potentiometer, we have a trimmer and this basically sets the base frequency of which we set when we calibrate the VCO. So if we calib calibrate it against another uh, another analog synthesizer device, try and do this with a scope. If you, you, can, you can do it by ear or you can actually do it by if you have any computer uh, programs or a door which has some kind of musically um, audio transmitting VST or something like that so you can kind of tune it with that but I've, I've tried to use a scope as well to try and get it as accurate as I can so basically this will set the frequency at which um, your um, oscillator will always be oscillating it because these are called free running oscillators so they won't start as soon as you hit the key they will always be running at a certain frequency and they will, most times will be this would be the base frequency at which they will start uh, which I've set mine to about 16 about 16 hertz 16 and a half hertz um, along here we have the CV input which comes from well, basically I'm inputting my mini brew at the moment still kept this 100k resistor going into the inverting input of this op amp here you can also use um, add additional inputs so say for instance you wanted a vibrato um, vibrato also just a normal standard pitch LFO you can pretty much add whatever kind of modulation inputs as you want you can also I've also added to mine um, a, the envelope generator in so the envelope also does the pitch controls the pitch as well so we have an option switch we can have LFO CV in or um, envelope CV in and that is about it to be honest with you there's not too much to say here this this VR2 I've also changed to a 22k reason being it wasn't giving me the VCO width I needed so basically that what that will do is set the width so for instance we over here we was at um, 16 16 Hertz and we wanted to go up to about 2 kilohertz we can actually set that lower by the width control so that gives you your span of how your VCO, where your VCO pitches will be set. And again, that is just a recap on that one. This will set how exponential or linear the uh, keys, each note will be apart. So that's where you get your one volt per octave tuning. Again, these are pretty much inexpensive standard parts. One thing I will say is probably if you're going to start this is to grab yourself um, probably try and do this with uh, the one percent tolerance resistors which are more precise to the values stated than the uh, the other type but you can use the, the brown carbon ones as well which are five percent and just see how you get on with it on mine's a bit of a mishmash to be honest with you so yeah so basically what we have here that's the last part where our control our control voltage comes out and then goes into the oscillator and I'm just going to try and dig out my schematic here so this is the schematic for my um, oscillator and as you can see it says from Expo converter so where pin 8 is here this will come out and go into your inverting input so you can have your control voltage in so what we have is oscillator plus the exponential converter which is the control voltage uh, converter gives you your VCO voltage controlled oscillator right um, next video I will be back to try and uh, give you a rundown of how I done some of my wave shaping for my oscillators anyway thank you for watching people if you have any questions leave them in the comment I'm not the most uh, technically knowledgeable person but I'll try and do my best to answer your questions leave a comment give me a like and uh, subscribe and also check out all the other videos in the series you can see the synthesizer in action anyway thanks for dropping by people catch you soon easy bye